2.0 versus Penta and Commander. Uh. Dude, this 2.0. These guys are... I've been watching them now. How long has it been since they were doing those dumbass skits behind the desk in NXT? We didn't know who the hell they were. They would show up on NXT, complain about how they were never on TV, and we cut away, like mid-sentence. They were t- there was total afterthought garbage geeks. And uh, they showed up here in AEW. They were, they were garbage geeks were getting TV time, at least. They hook up with Jericho. They're his comedy geek flunkies, but they get a lot of TV time. They're in pay-per-view main events and acting like they belong. And then that the, the, the Jericho Appreciation Society ran its course, and... You think, okay, now is the time to do their own thing. They start claiming these tag team rankings. And no. They had a hell of a match, an awesome match, with Penta and Commander here, who are not even a full-time team, and they couldn't get a win in their hometown. Brother, I was so mad when this match was over. I was so angry because I have been watching these shows, and let me tell you who does jobs all the fucking time. Commander. They beat this guy like a drum. He gets beaten all the time. So 2.0 is in their hometown. And they can't pin Commander to get a win. In fact, Commander fucking gets the pin in this match. And I was I was like, listen. You had 2,800 people in the building, Okay. That's not very good at all. But you know what? 2,800 people cared enough to buy a ticket for your show. Those are the people. Those are the most important people. The 28 people who actually paid. So you couldn't even give them a win by the hometown boys in their hometown. You had to beat them. And you know what's funny? You know what's funny? When AEW first started, the reason they got over so big early was because they did all the things that WWE didn't do. Mm -hmm. All of the things that pissed people off about WWE, AEW did the opposite. And lo and behold, they got like a whole bunch of fucking people watching AEW who had quit watching WWE. And one of the things they always did was people always won in their hometown. Well, here we are. At the end of 2023, and this is not the first time that somebody has been beaten recently in their hometown. In fact, I would bet you that if you went back, way more often than not, people are now getting beaten in their hometown all the time. And the irony is, with the exception, obviously, of Sami Zayn and and Drew McIntyre, because they had a storyline with Roman Reigns, the funny thing is in WWE... People are winning now in yeah. their hometown that Hunter is in charge. What in the fuck has happened here? I I just was like, why did you beat these guys? They were so over. Send these 2,800 people home with something. Some big win. But they had to beat them and it's not like Commander can't fucking lose. All he fucking does is lose. So I was mad. I was like, Jesus, what's happened here? I don't know. That made me angry. Yeah, there was only 2,800 people in the building, but every one of the 2,800 was chanting for um, 2.0. Yeah. Daddy magic like, chance. The fuck. And it's not, like, it's not like Phoenix is the one that beat him. Or I'm sorry, it, not like uh, Penta. Penta is the one that beat him. It was Commander who... As you noted, loses all the time. So what would be the big deal? Their comedy is awesome. Yes. When they need to do serious money main event promos. They're awesome. Their matches are very good. What are we doing here? I don't I understand. Can't, I when they're when they're cutting promos, I cannot take my eyes off of Daddy Magic, even if he's not talking. He is such a cartoon, and he is so great. Yeah, he he can be a cartoon, but when they were doing like the blood and guts matches. That's true. And he's talking about what he's sacrificing. And he's, he's basically, he's Ilya Dragunov. He's sacrificing time for his family to try and to, to try and give him a better life. He's awesome. And, uh, and Cool Hand Hands is also quite great. And, and, and they're just withering on the vine here. I don't understand. 
Danny Magic would be if Buddy Wayne was still around. They would be best friends. That is almost certainly true. Yeah. Shane Taylor, Keith Lee video package. Got our, got our match. Uh, we got the the one of my favorite things about the Continental Classic is that wins and losses have uh, not just stakes in the tournament. There's emotional stakes going on here. Jay Lethal and Mark Briscoe, after their losses on Dynamite and other people's wins, they've been they're out of the running. They cannot win now. Lethal can't even speak. He's just the one to tantrum backstage, tosses stuff around on the verge of tears. Briscoe is pissed. He came all this way to AEW, waited this long to get his big break on national TV. Here he is 0-3. He's out of the run. He's very upset. Uh, Rush and Moxley and Jay White and Swerve, they're all winning their matches. And uh, Swerve again calls out Moxley for Wednesday. Continental Classic Blue League match. Let me get my one criticism out of the way first. And we can talk about how great this match was otherwise. Brian Danielson has a broken orbital bone. Yeah. He got surgery a month ago. He wasn't supposed to be back till January. And they had him in the ring with a giant fucking eye patch on at the end of November. Okay? Why the hell couldn't you start this tournament in January? Mm-hmm. Why the hell couldn't you start this tournament in February? Why did you have to start this in November with this guy who's got a broken orbital bone? He obviously badly wants to do this tournament. But the fact of the matter is, as good as this match was, we are not getting the best Brian Danielson. There were three spots in this match, minimum. I may have missed others. Three botched spots all by Danielson. They they did an arm drag early and just fucking ran into each other and fell down because they mistimed it. He went for a dive through the ropes, and he mistimed that and came up way short. And then there was one before the finish. And the reason for it is he's got one eye. <laughs> like, you're not getting the best of Brian Danielson. He's putting himself in danger He's wrestling before he should, and it's like, if you just waited a month or two, he'd have been all healed up, and you'd have had 100% Brian Danielson to do this tournament. So I'm praying he doesn't get hurt. I'm praying he doesn't get hurt. Yeah, yeah. But, dude. With that said, this match was quite great. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, Dane Rank, both undefeated. Dane Rank's had two matches, 2-0. and Andrade, 1-0 and coming in. Um, so, Andrade... He's one of those guys, he's like deceptively big, but he's in there with Danielson, he, uh, with Danielson, who actually did call Daniel Bryan here, what a geek I am. But uh, Andrade is just, just massive. He looks so much bigger than this guy. And he cuts him off immediately, and he's dominating him. And this is a different Brian Danielson than we've seen in a long time. And the Brian Danielson we've seen for like most of his AEW run, but especially since that strap match with Ricky Starks, has been an asshole. A, 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 a fun-to-watch asshole, but a really violent cruel human being and here he gets cut off and bullied right away his injuries are being picked on he was the sympathetic underdog on this show to the point where the eye patch is torn off you can see it's still swollen he's bleeding everywhere Andrade is elbowing him right in the eyeball and even Nigel McGinnis who hates this fucker <laughs> with all his heart even he starts to feel sympathy you've got to feel for Danielson's wife he says he wasn't even that attractive to begin with but by the end, like, it sounded like sincere. He was, for Danielson's safety, he wanted the match to be called off. His head butts to the eye, a thumb to the eye. Uh, a, a boxing match breaks out, of all things, until Andrade hits a gory special, slams him into the, into the uh, turnbuckle. At the five minute warning, Andrade hits a superplex into the three amigos for a two count. Danielson tries to tie him up in knots like he did with Okada at a Wrestle Dream, but, or not Wrestle Dream, uh, what was that show? Forbidden Door. Uh, until Andrade gets the ropes. Andrade dodges the knee strike. He hits a running Judas effect for a near fall. Crowd didn't buy that as a finish at all. They begin to elbow each other in the face really, really hard. Andre, Andrade hits another running back elbow. It just stomps the holy loving hell out of Danielson's eyeball. Kevin Kelly is begging the referee to stop this match. And Andrade picks him up. It's a hammerlock DDT for the win. I love this tournament. The tournament's awesome. All the matches are great. The stakes are immediate, immediately obvious. Uh, I, again, also hope Danielson does not uh, get killed between now and at least through January 4th. That's a big match, too. Yeah. But uh, this tournament's awesome. It's one of the best things AEW has done all year. Mm-hmm. And there's things that, that obviously build off this because all the doctors and Claudio are out there to check on Danielson. Andrade goes to check on Danielson, but Claudio shoves him away. They have a match coming up in this tournament. Oh, by the way, Claudio and Danielson have a match coming up in this tournament. 
So there's a lot to unpack and a lot of fallout to be felt from this. Yeah. Claudio is really mad at Andrade. Andrade's going to check on Brian, mm-hmm. but Claudio yeah. is mad at him for beating a guy with one eye well, who for- entered the tournament with one eye. Yeah. Claudio, what the fuck do you think is going to happen, brother? And what are you going to do when you're in the ring with that guy? Yeah. Avoid his eye? Well, you know what? This guy's a psychopath. He's not going to avoid your fucking eye. No. He's going to go after it. He will target your right eye by going through the left eye. Yes. Mm. So, uh, yeah, the match was was great. Hopefully, Brian's fine. God, just uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm sure Brian's fine. You could tell that he gigged and and all that. And um, but even though I saw him, you know, roll over with the blade and gig, it was terrifying because the guy just had surgery three weeks ago. Yes. So your updated Blue League standing is a little wacky because we have a different number of matches here. Brody King and Andrade El Idolo have the, uh, they're in the catbird seat, as it's called. They each have six points and three matches left. Everyone else only has two. Davison has six points with only two matches left. Claudio and Eddie Kingston now have three. And poor Daniel Garcia, zero points and only two matches left. Hmm. One thing, by the way, I, thought, I noticed this in some of the matches on Dynamite and also on this show. I think the announcers forget sometimes that you only have to finish in the top two to advance in this thing. Because they were talking right. about how, uh, I think it was Eddie, Eddie so one of the matches was one of the guys who was saying, now he cannot finish in first place. He's out of the tournament. Well, no, he's not out of the tournament. He can still finish in second. And I forget what exactly, exactly when. But, uh, you know, first time for everything. And they're, they're, uh, they're still learning the rules themselves. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that notify button, and you'll never miss a video again.